Welcome to today's 3D print. New toy. Ender 3. You've been waiting for this. Stay tuned. So, here we have the Ender 3 from Smarty Store. I'll post a link down below. Um, they, I bought this. They didn't pay for it for me. Um, I pre-ordered it, and they managed to get one to me a little faster, so hopefully I can get it out to you guys faster. This is the Ender 3, the one I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for this so much, I bought three. So I have two more coming direct from Creality, because if you manage to get in on the first round of 500, it was 159 bucks. Shit. <laughs> this is an i3 class. 220 by 220 by 250 expanded build platform for an i3. And we are going to put it together. This is going to be fun. Stay tuned while I pull everything out of the box. First off, I'm kind of impressed that they were able to pack so much into this little box. That's really impressive, actually considering what's in here. So let's go over what's in this. Um, quite a few updates, which I think people are going to enjoy. Uh, my microphone got tossed around a little bit. Um, the end cap with the cover for the end stop switch, a little more light for you guys, is now ABS molded. That's nice. The feeder assembly for the filament running to the hot end is completely revamped um, Creality uh, it'd be nice if you would sell this kit so that we can upgrade all of our Creality printers to use this because this is nice it's got a beefier handle with some um, texturing on it it's got a grip to hold the cable assembly coming from the hot end and it's got a restricted filament path here a nice tight restricted filament path so this will be much more friendly to flexibles I also like that the inlet here is now a funnel so that the filament will more easily be funneled into the hole without you having to precisely hit the hole this is a nice improvement and thank God finally you guys did it the um, where the compression fitting goes into the feeder assembly is now a brass insert a thermal um, brass insert so that you are now screwing brass into brass instead of brass into plastic which strips very easily I've got to say that is beautiful it even says Creality 3D on it good for you guys Can you see that there it is that is a nice feeder assembly I like that my only question is um, Something I would suggest for a Rev 2, if possible, beef this up. So put a little gusset right there between this piece here and this piece here. Because natural tendency is to grab this like this, to squeeze this. What about up here? Okay, up here I tend to do it from here. So this might not be necessary. But if you come around behind, you're going to grab it from here. And this is not exactly super strong. But as this mounts on the printer, you're going to be getting it from the front, and your finger is going to want to sit right here. So that's plenty strong. That's nice. That is a good design. I like that a lot. I like to see them iteratively upgrading and keeping the design refreshed. Fantastic. That's your X carriage. No idea what that is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I got to figure out what it is. This would be your two verticals. And your lead screw. This would be the cross beam. One of these is probably the cross beam for the top. The other one, I'm not sure. Oh, cross beam for the top and your X arm. So the longer one is going to be your X arm, and the shorter one is going to be the cross beam between the two vertical arms. Your screen unit. So this will bolt on to the front of the printer, probably, where would this go? I guess this would go right here. Oh yeah, right there. Well, very nice. I like that. I like that a lot. You'll, I'll show you that later. Connections on the back. 
Nice. Here's the plastic for you guys. You ready? There you go. So that's where you get that G-Max-esque kind of look going for it. The ABS molded and ready to go Z-axis. More compact motor. I like that. Z-axis doesn't have to be super strong. Your typical Creality spool holder, of course, except this one doesn't say Ender or anything like that, which is a pity. So, those veins there, maybe we'll have to make some plastic little insert to put there. But this at least allows them to use the same spool holder for everything. They should put this on all their printers, including the CR-10. Your typical Creality spatula. And one moment while I open the good bag. Well, I guess I can show you the rest first. Power supply, already assembled, covered, plug ready, so you do not have to mess with mains voltage. Do not forget to flip your switch to 110. Do it now. Don't wait. Stop. Pause the video. Do this now. You don't want to burn anything up, so make sure you switch that to the correct voltage. Um, it says LED power supply. Like, it actually says LED power supply. That's interesting. Oh! 24 volt. Nice. About time we got an upgrade to 24 volt. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm really pleased by that. It looks like a brand name. I mean, it's actually got a nice logo on everything, so maybe they're actually using a high-quality power supply. Oh, that would be fantastic. This is 24 volt, 15 amp. So, very nice. Uh, I'm pleased. I would like to see this be a little bit better. That's a little loose. This is the only 3D printed part I could find on the entire thing. I guess they're still finalizing the design of that. But uh, if it goes like any of the others, in a couple of months, they'll be shipping these out with ABS molding. I would like to see this come out a little further and come up the side and use one of these holes here so that this doesn't floopy, floppy like that. It does have the IEC connection switched and fused. I already popped that out. There was a fuse in there. So mine came with a European power plug, but as we all know, this is a $3 plug. It doesn't matter. Flip that switch, replace the $3 plug, you're done. It's a standard C13. One moment. Okay, the new hot end. It is slightly upgraded, iterative, like we've been seeing from them, which is one of the reasons I, I like their products. Um, I'm not too sure I like the way how tight that heater cartridge is in there, but we'll see. Uh, looks like belt attachment. The heat block now is smaller, a little more compact. I like that. And it's gold anodized. And the cooling part of the hot end is updated. It has got more fins now. It's not as... Um, it's, it's got more fins, so more surface area for cooling the heat block is insulated it's got the abs molded duct which i'm not quite sure i like the way it's aimed but i'll reserve judgment until it prints otherwise nice and also i did notice that the fans are now creality branded is that a sticker or are they actually having these fans made now and we shall see if they're nice and quiet and not noisy i noticed on some of their other printers they were starting to get a little quieter like the cr10s wasn't nearly as noisy as the cr10 so hopefully that means they are selecting better quality components and oeming them or even having them made to their own specifications that's cool standard nozzle so i'm going to replace that nozzle with a tungsten nozzle we're going to have fun with that otherwise typical good quality hot end no problems i like the sheathing they retained the upgraded y-axis um, tension relief. It's not the right size for this bed, but that's okay. It extends out past it, and it is rigidly held in place, so no problem. Why not reuse the part? Here's the really cool part. Upgraded knobs. It's got real bed leveling knobs now. Not those little tiny garbage things that we're so used to. It's got real knobs now. You can actually turn. And they're even marked with up-down direction. Very cool. Iterative updates. I like it. Um, this block here contains the electronic guts of the printer. I don't even know if there's any cooling in there. Yes, there is. There's a fan here. So we have a little fan right there. SD card and USB on the front. XTC connector goes out to the power supply, which I believe will mount on top of this rail here. That is, I did confirm that's an XTC 60 connector. Um, yeah, nice. 
The feet are a little chintzy. They're just double stick tape. Well, not double stick. They're rubber, heavy rubber feet, but they're they're there. But not bad. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I am not a fan of the cutout for the electronics here, but they did use a 4040. By using a 4040, they can cut out half of the 4040 and still have the other 2040 for stiffness. I do not think this will require any form of um, stiffening. They also use caddy corner screws, which is perfect. So it takes care of both directions of possible flex, while still permitting the vertical screws to go straight through. It looks like they actually thought this out pretty good. This H-frame should be more than stiff enough. I do not anticipate a problem. My bed is loose. I'm going to have to adjust the eccentric nuts to take care of that. But they are both right here on this side. Easy access. Nice. Uh, I like this. I'm impressed. This is all metal. Stamped metal. No 3D printed parts. The only 3D printed part so far is the even these are ABS molded. The print knobs so I'm gonna be trying to order a whole crap ton of these <laughs> but then again I could print them so easily so why bother but very nice I I hope they'll continue doing that designing their printers with the idea of having those in place what I don't like is that they moved away from those beautiful nice flat springs they've been using to regular round wire springs I wonder why they did that the flat wire springs are so much better so I'll be replacing those with the flat wire springs otherwise let's get to it so the first goodie bag includes uh, it actually says spare parts good and that is both compression fittings and a spare nozzle this looks like x-axis belt tension I'm guessing x-axis or no, it's probably Z-axis, actually. Um, step, step, um, Z-limit, limit switch. And it is ABS molded, not acrylic. Nice. So it's going to have more give. Um, your acupuncture needle, so when you want to torture your nozzle for daring to clog, clog up on you. Your typical SD card with an 8 gigabyte unmarked SD card. There's a bunch of stuff on the back. i got a picture of that for you, but it's not like a branded card. Come on, Creality. You're known for including those nice 200 some odd gram spools of filament, those little tiny micro spools. Come on. Include a spool of filament. Okay. Maybe if you did this for your intro price, okay. But once you start charging regular price, you know, $200, whatever the normal price is, include a proper sample spool. Come on. We know you can. Then you have your tool and screw bag. So this contains everything else. Zip ties, your classic pair of nippers, which are still my favorites because they can open up nice and wide, which makes part removal easy. Wrenches, zip ties, GT tube belts, and all the different nuts, bolts, and screws that we're going to need to finish the assembly of this printer. As you can see, this is not quite the quick assembly of a CR10, but this is what I would call an 80% ARF, an almost ready to fly, or an ARP, almost ready to print. So it's mostly assembled, but you've got to build the vertical. Okay, and put assemblies onto the printer. So the, the hot end is not installed, but it's assembled. The vertical riser is um, not installed, but it's assembled. You just got to plug things into it. The screen is not attached, but it's all done. You just got to plug it in and attach it. So it's mostly assembled. Um, yeah, the nuts are there. And then there is also an actual instruction manual, although still not a very nice one. Let's see what's in here. So that's just a card saying thanks for ordering. Uh, basically, it's a 8 by quad folded piece of paper for your instructions. They do look pretty good. The instructions look pretty nice. They are pretty simple. One suggestion I would like to see them do is to... Um, uh, maybe they are, I'll check, but I don't think so, because that's, I don't know if, if they are, I'm sorry, but um, maybe if they are, I would recant this, but it'd be nice to see these be true to scale, so that the end user could actually hold the bolt up to it and say, okay, that's the bolt for that. But yeah, simple instructions. There are 12 steps. It doesn't look that difficult. 
let's get going. Alrighty, I had to tension up the belt a little bit. I had to push the um, connected end on the bed toward the center a little bit. It was a little off center. It was just it slid in the track, and I had to tighten up the bearings and the eccentric nuts. But now it's good. I think I might have a flat washer though. Maybe that'll go away with time, but I can feel it divoting. Like there's a flat spot in the ball bearing. We'll see. Now, I also installed the control panel using two of the M58s. And now I will install the um, power brick and vertical. Next up, install the verticals. Install the limit switch for the Z-axis, which is infinitely adjustable now. So no more printing adjustable Z-limit switches. All you got to do is loosen the two screws and slide this up and down the rail wherever you want it to be. And then, of course, your verticals bolt straight through the 2040s, actually straight through the 4040s into the 2040s, and that's your verticals. Install your Z-axis stepper, plug your stepper in, install the Z-rod, loosen up just the top, not the bottom. It's a compression instead of a grub, which is much nicer coupler. So the bottom is already tightened for the stepper. Only the top has to be loosened for the rod. I gave mine a light tap from the top to push it in. It's in there, tightened up, good to go. Next up is to install the X arm onto the vertical trolley. That contains the um, X motor and the feeder stepper. And the you're going to notice both ends have three holes. Large hole, cut out for a bolt to fit, and then two holes. The one that has wider spacing goes on the outside. Shorter spacing goes on this end. That's called B1 in the drawing. It looks odd in the drawing because they hold it like this. So that's the shorter end. This is the one where you have to put the two bolts inside and put the wrenches through the hole here to tighten them up. It does look like they have upgraded the hardware. The bolts, most of the bolts, not all of them, but most of the bolts appear to now be proper um, cap screws and or they look like they are hardened. So they're not the, most of the bolts are not the cheap, soft metal ones that were in there before. Hopefully they'll eventually replace all the bolts with nice hardened ones. Um, usually the, the crowned, the mushroom silver ones are usually the cheap ones, but so far I have not encountered any cheap bolts, so that's good. Although I did encounter a QC issue, most of the primary bolts holding this atrium together needed to be tightened. Um, quite a lot actually. They weren't loose, but I was able to make several turns before I felt them seat and properly tighten. Not a huge deal, but standard protocol you should go through and tighten all the bolts on any printer you build. All right, next step is to slide the assembled X gantry onto the rail and the Z rod. You gotta make sure you gently turn the Z rod into it as you push it on so you don't bend or tweak your Z rod. You then, um, before you install this plate, there's a little gotcha in the instructions. You have to make sure you install this onto the rail first before you put the plate on. Because otherwise, the bolts on the back here will hit and prevent you from installing it. It looks like if I can shorten those bolts a little bit, I might be able to squeeze a little more X out of it. But that's probably past the edge of the bed anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, um, so... Install this first, then install the plate with two bolts from behind. You'll have to compress the towers together a little bit to line the bolts up, and you are golden. The Z-axis now rises up and down, no problem. Final step is to plug in the wires. Make sure your LCD is plugged into EXP3. That's the one all the way on the left here. Um, install the gantry, the top, the top brace, spool holder, the belt, the tensioner, or the X. All done. This printer is now ready to go. It heats up crazy fast. <laughs> and you are hearing it now in operation. All the fans are going. Um, this fan's not going. Just this fan's going. And I believe the power supply fan's going. So right now the loudest fan is the power supply fan. So I'm probably going to replace that with an ultra quiet. But in general, it's pretty darn quiet. I'm impressed. This printer looks slick as snot. <laughs> I mean, this is... They did a good job. There's a few things I would like to see improved. For example, I would love them to switch over to the optical or whatever it is uh, end stops that TiVo's using now. I would like to um, see quieter fans. Uh, although this is a huge improvement over what they've had before. 
Uh, um, um, I'm liking what I'm seeing. It's looking nice so far. So now I'm going to tram the bed to the nozzle and next gantry and get the first print going. Well, it's going. I had to do a little quick live level as it was printing the surprise. I'm not going to tell you. But Creality, I'm disappointed. It's not a cat. I come to expect the cat. So of course I'll have to print a cat too. Yeah. <laughs> but so far so good. It's actually doing a surprisingly good job. I actually see no stringing. I mean, it retracts and moves and no stringing. Wow. So we shall see how it prints. I'm running some CC tree. They sent me some filament to try out to review for you guys. So I figured might as well put it in this. So I got some CC tree fluorescent green. I'm going to run through it. I'm running at 60 and 200 and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to let this go as it is, however it came sliced from Creality, and then I will try cranking up the speed and see what happens and try printing some of my own stuff, and that will be what you see next.